Baba, Lanem Mude, Yakang, Himalayan Yakun, Yam Yanvil, Hiba Lata. In the sixteenth century, a man called Nyakanga conquered a narrow strip of territory along the Nile. According to local history, he united the various groups living there into one people, and they became known as the Shiluk. Today, although their territory is part of the modern Sudan, the dynasty founded by Nyikangu still rules from the royal capital, Bushoda. Protocol sets the royal capital apart from other villages. Nobody can keep chickens here. Women may not give birth. Visitors should take off their shoes and lay down their spears. And there's even a special court language for speaking with the ref or king. Every morning, people arrive in Pushoda to seek an audience with the ref. Etiquette requires them to bring a gift, money or a cow, for example. They arrive early and must be prepared to wait under the watchful gaze of the ref's bodyguard. This man, Ayang Gane Kur, will be the 33rd ref. The previous ref died eight months ago, and Ayang Gane has been chosen by the senior chiefs to be his successor. But he has not yet been installed. The spirit of Nyakango must first take possession of him. Ayangane must become the embodiment of the founder of the Shiluk. Traditional Shiluk see the Reth as a person around whom their lives revolve. It's the divine presence of Nyakango in the Reth which is supposed to give them their purpose for living. And they still trace their roots by reference to the social order established by Nyakango. When a wreath dies, the country enters a period of instability and uncertainty. At the death of a king, the spirit of Nyakang disappears into the Nile, and the Shaluk say the world is lost. And the world is not fully regained for them until the spirit of Nyakang has come to shore in the person of the new wreath. Some months after the death of the previous king, the priests of this village in the north fetch Nyakang from the Nile. They then remake this image of him and also one of his tall warrior son, Duck. The priests will parade the effigies made of bamboo and ostrich feathers through the villages of the northern Shiluk, retracing the movements of Nikang and Dak in their conquest of the north of the country. Finally, they'll reach the center. Nikang will capture the Reth elect and install him as his representative. The effigies and the priests cannot begin their journey until all the other preparations are ready. For example, ivory, silver, beads, spears and skins have to be collected for the Reth elect, each by the particular village made responsible for the task by Nyakangu. <laughs> Tomorrow, these men in the southernmost district of the country will go to hunt the antelopes whose skins will adorn the king and other officials on the final day of his installation. 
dina yag gi wel ñang dog wel ñang ke bur wala de tiang jël mano bi dum ki wuna bi ci la jay lay tu da ba kwa kala ki ka ñi ya kala lalo ku lay gengul ke ke bakan nga ko bay ke mool faaw nam ke sa abir yonus The chief who has called the young men for the hunt has also arranged a dance. This island in the middle of the Nile is a sanctuary for the very rare Gek antelopes. When Nyikang stopped here on his journey of conquest, he thought them animals of the greatest beauty, and they've been reserved for royalty ever since. Chiluk commoners are forbidden to hunt them, except these particular villages, before the installation of a new ref. They did eventually succeed in spearing the required number of antelopes. And the chief of the area will take the skins to Pashoda, where they will be kept along with the other precious objects ready for the installation. The Reth elect waits in the royal capital for the different villagers to fulfill their ritual obligations. Meanwhile, attending to their disputes.
The installation starts when the effigies of Nyikango and Dak begin their ten-day journey towards Poshod. Dak, the tall warrior son, paves the way, while Nikang follows. Just as, according to Shilok history, Dak led the military raids, while Nikango organized the people into one political unit. Wherever they pass, the people flock to pay homage to the founders of their nation. In every village, a shrine is prepared to receive them. While Nikang rests inside, Dak comes out to dance and cleanse those who ask for blessing. The people sing the praises of Nikang and Dak in songs which record their exploits. is a time of spiritual renewal, part of the regeneration of the whole nation that is the essence of the installation. No one should stare at Dak or let him come too close to them. The priests with their hippo whips clear a path for him. of the new ref will reaffirm the social order and the political identity of the Chinook, a nation made up of competing localities. The people feel disorder threatens them until Nyukango has possessed the king to be. So, men must not carry spears, only stalks from the maize fields. And then they are safe to boast of the military might of their own villages and to issue challenges to others. Shiluk is a soldier of Nikan, and all the villagers mount a guard of honor for the effigies as they escort them through their locality. 
Like the crusading soldiers in medieval Europe, the Shaluk saw an intimate connection between military prowess against outsiders and spiritual strength. Historically, they extended their territory by military raids against neighboring tribes. More recently, in the 19th century, they had to defend themselves against slave traders. Today, there's peace, but the conflicts of the past have not been forgotten. The journey takes the form of a pilgrimage, retracing the movements of Nikan. The priest must stop wherever he stopped, even if it's only to commemorate a tree under which he shaded himself from the heat of the day. Any pause creates an opportunity for the elders to challenge a rival village. Kalau kalau In the old days, the Reth led the Shuluk in war and was the final arbiter of their disputes. Today, his role as chief judge has been formalized by the Sudanese government into that of second-class magistrate. 
but perhaps his most important function was to serve as a focus of political loyalty and national identity. And that he continues to be today. Newcandle and Dak near the end of their 80 mile journey towards Bushel. One of the last villages they honour is the village where the late Reth is buried. His widows pay homage to Nikangu by singing the funeral lament which praises their late husband. After a 10-day journey, the effigies of Nikang and Dak approach the royal capital. They will halt at Adolt, a village three miles to the north of Pushoda. Here they will prepare for their capture of the Reth-elect. On his part, the Reth-elect shows his fear of Nikangu by retreating under cover of night to Dibala, a village three miles to the south of Pushoda. At this stage, people from the north, by tradition, gather to support Nikangu, and people from the south to support the Reth-elect. After three days, the two will meet in a mock battle, which is the dramatic climax of the installation. Just before his flight to Dibalo, Ayangane changed his Shilok bodyguard for a bodyguard of government police. He decided that in the modern world, he needed more than spears to protect him. Traditionally, the Reth elect's stay in Dibalo is considered a time of particular danger to him. Three families hold the kingship in turn, and the 33rd Reth can only come from Ayangane's own family. One of his brothers would automatically replace him should he be killed or even slightly wounded before his acceptance by Nyukang. There was a rumor that one of them was planning to kill him. It was also said that Ayangane wanted to look like a modern leader. On the Reth elect's first evening in Dabalo, the chiefs of the southern Shiluk gather to greet him formally. But things were beginning to go wrong, perhaps because people were afraid of the government police. They were not Shiluk, and were naturally enough unaware of Shiluk custom. <laughs> After the greetings to the Reth, a man from a particular clan should spear the bull, but there was nobody from the clan present. Eventually, a Land Rover was sent to fetch the missing man, and the bull was killed. But things went from bad to worse. That night, the chiefs did not sleep in Dabalo as custom requires they should. It was alleged that the government police chased them away. Eventually, Kranjurath Bol, the most knowledgeable of all the chiefs and the master of ceremonies, arrived from Pushoda to sort things out. <laughs> Okay, they're here, they're here. Ninja! 
Ben ege bello pacchi. Un un e corgen. Pado che che se coro un u cuore già. O che corgen. Dice me go. Ma tu di qui. Di qui. O go qua in gel. Gaia pacchi. Ben e pan di cube. De pan di. Bu che le come. De ben e pan di cube già. Danan. U gogno. Che la bomba di giallo ma non lo che gli è che ha chiesto. Ubi è per cuore. De bene per 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 cuore che per che fanno io aiu aiu dien. Aiu tom aiu cuore. Fanno. Che gli già. Danan gli ha tom. Da bus cuore è bene. Gli mogli lì mi è. Gli ha di già gova di. Gli ha già. Ba wutan, lihin, mung mung ini mung ini begin lagi, ini ini kau lagi, dia macam cerita pel, cerita begin, dia apa ni pasca ni ni ada dua kan, belanja ni ni pasca, cerita pun, dia pasca ni ni pasca dong, cerita, ugu aku kau, ugu aku, ugu kau lagi, dia nulis cerita apa ni, jaga jaga nulis cerita apa ni, begin aku macam jaga kau piat, pasca dia aku macam. Ama na chat gan? Gina kom ya na na. Jaga jaga ama na chat gan. Jaga kom ya na. Ya pit. Kena jiu berge gir. Ya ku jaga jaga udong. Gina kom wa kau wa. Abang zaman. Jaga jaga udong. Dia kena dua. Ama na ku ku jaga jaga wi kekat. Gana ku baman. Beli ku ya ku baman na chat. Katrok. Mana aku mahu yang cing cing ban? Yang cing aku mahu yang cing wih ban aku mahu ku ban. Yang cing ban aku mahu ban. Yang mahu tu. Iba aku suruh cing. Mana iu ku mahu ban? Yang cing ban. Yang ubi. Mana aku mahu ku ban? Ku ban mahu uli jaga jaga ban. Yang ubi. Yang ubi. Yang aku cing ban. Dagin tu yang mana? Mana aku mahu ikat bi jaga jaga. Lepas iu ku aku mahu ku ban. Ku ban. Yang cing ban. Dina kelu jaga jaga. Atau ya. Ku ban kelu ku ban. Mana ku ban dong jaga. ยาวจังเด็กก็ยืนอยู่ในยี่ก้อนตู้จับตู้จับควบไปนี่ก้อนคือยาวเงินเดือนมันกันเอาคิดกันดิกินี่นี่เจ้าก้อนมาอยู่
Perhaps he hasn't been given the right present. And on leaving the Balo, the Rethelect has to step over a bull. It's important that it's facing in the right direction. Meanwhile, Nyakanga and his supporters have left their temporary resting place three miles to the north of Poshoda and are marching towards the Rathalek. The supporters of the Reth elect will halt at a dry river bed, believed to mark the very centre of Shiluk country, just outside the shoulder. Its name means unity of the people. Nyukang's army is already drawn up on the other side. Chickens are considered troublesome creatures, and one is held up, perhaps to remind Dayangane of all the troublesome people he will have to tolerate. An advance party of Nyukang's army gives the recollect a cow to step over as he crosses the dry river bed. Finally, a messenger runs back and forth between the recollect and Nyukang carrying messages of scorn between the two. Yukangu taunts the Rethelect by saying that he's angry and will never permit him to enter Poshoda. The Rethelect replies that not even Yukangu can frighten him. When the ritual abuse is over, the mock battle can begin. The two armies edge closer to each other, and Nyukanga and Dak begin their final advance towards the Rethelect. the 
captures the ref elect and hands him over to Nukai. At the same moment, the two armies begin to hurl their stalks of maize at each other. The battle is a ritual drama whose outcome is predetermined. It involves the whole population in a mock conflict which reinforces the theme of the ceremony, the unity of the Shilluk nation. Reths are honoured not primarily because of their own qualities, but because of the office they hold in direct line from Nyukanga. The followers of Nyukanga always defeat the followers of the Reth. The office is more powerful than the man. Nyukanga leads the Reth off to his shrine in Pushoda. Here, screened from the gaze of the people, the Reth will be possessed by Nyukanga, whose spirit will enter into him. The effigy returns to the shrine. Water is poured over the new wreath, perhaps in the hope that the rains will be plentiful during his rule. The spiritual climax over, the political finale remains. The Reth spends two nights in these four houses. He is bathed and shaved, and then dressed up in the silver bracelets, ivory armbands, and antelope skins. On the final day, the chiefs and the senior elders gather beneath the mound. <laughs> Each chief rises in turn to advise the ref. This is the last time that they can speak their minds to him. Yeah. 
the chief of Nagya. <laughs> The chief of noon. Last two to speak are the chief of the extreme north and the chief of the extreme south. In the old days, they were the protectors of the country's frontiers. <laughs> the chief of Momo. <laughs> Right. And I've been we done. Eh? Be here. Utul be. Will you go to my wife? Give me a miracle and I. Give me a you get. Could you get? You have a good check up. Check up. Chief of Tonga. Ah, 
Terra de novo, bem no dia. Se vai ter o Covid. Tem nem o que é o Covid. Nem lá ele ganha o ali. O ali boa na Covid. Boa no Covid. Mas lá ele já não. Qual boa no Covid? Agora o Covid tem que ir boa. O boa. Ah, se vai ter o Covid. Boa no Covid não é. Rumba rumba, abel rumba que é, rumba já, rumba já, porque é, a a a ganhar nisso é que pior, que é que é o qual lá, mas é o que é, é o que é que vai cair, que é o que o vídeo é isso, é já, eu perdi o coelho, que é o abafan, é aí o anitin, o abafan anitin, e o que é né, que é o que lá que é, é o que é né. E o que é? Dano. Boca mais além. Dano, tu homem. E já é tu homem. Já é tu homem. Tu homem. Lengue em mais do que. Caiu lengue em mais do que. Caiu lengue em mais do que. Capem que. Badia Ferri. Um alcubo. Finally, the ref rises to reply. Then who are you for? 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 Who Nak kau jumpa dengan jepol? Oh, you orang. Kena cakap dia lihat dia lalu dekannya. Kau mungkin mungkin dia orang ramai juga dia orang agni cual kau pergi. Tanya tahu kau dah ngaji jauh. Dah cuma makan aja. Kau dah ngaji.
In his speech, Ayanga Ney threatened to stamp out the purveyors of modern ideas which challenge his traditional authority. Today, several Shiluk are ministers and high officials in the government of the Sudan. Like their government, they want to bring greater development, education and democracy to the country. Ayangane must be aware that this will inevitably lead to a decline in his own power and prestige. The increase in educational opportunities is already affecting the traditional social order, based as it is on inherited rank. But Shiluk identity is intricately bound up with Nikyangbo, and, as his representative, the Reth will continue to provide a unique focus of meaning for his people for some time to come.